Hello, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, we are going to continue on our Playmaker Platformer project, and we are going to implement the new input system from Unity and also create the on-screen touch control because with the new input system, it is much easier to create this. So this is what are we going to create here. We can move using the keyboard, but at the same time, we can also move using the on-screen touch control. So now let's integrate the new input system and we can go to the window under the package manager, search for input. And once it finished search, you should be able to see the input system package here. So let's just select this package and I'm going to press install. And after install, it will ask to restart the Unity to enable the new input system. And this will disable the old input system. So the get access, the get button down action will not work anymore. And we need to change that. Okay, so now it's imported. I'm going to import the on-screen controls and this is for the touch screen control. So I'm going to press this import into project button. Okay, now we are done with the package manager. Let's just close this. And I'm going to go to the project settings because the project didn't ask to restart. So I'm going to go to the player settings. And here, if we scroll down, I'm going to change the active input handling to the new one. So let's just pick this one and it will ask to restart the editor. So I'm going to restart this. Okay, so now the editor is restart. Let's just close this project settings window. Under the project panel, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this new input. And inside this folder, I'm going to create a new object or assets and it is called the input actions here. And this is basically for setting up the key bindings to a certain value to a vector or boolean just like the get access and the get button down action but this is for the new input system so i'm going to call this base control and i'm going to edit the asset here so here as you can see we need to create action maps first action maps is basically a set of actions and we can create multiple sets of actions for example when we are on a certain area on the land then we want to bind to a different set of actions and if we are on the water we can just create a different action maps for that so i'm going to call the action map basic because i'm going to use all of this control throughout the project and for the new action i'm going to change the action type to pass through and the control type to vector 2 and this will output X and Y value and we can map this value to a button or to the analog stick of a joystick so let's just rename this and let's just call this analog you can call this anything and beside the analog actions here there is a plus button I'm going to add a new binding so I'm going to create a new 2d vector composite and this is for the keyboard binding and if we go to the up binding here we can just click on the path and then press listen and I'm going to type this W and pick the W keyboard and for the down I'm going to also listen and then press S and pick that button and for the left I'm going to listen again and then press A and the same goes with the right binding I'm going to press D here you can bind this to also the up and down left or right arrow just simply create a new 2d vector composite and now we can just bind this. I'm going to fast forward this. So now we have two different bindings for our keyboard. And for the first binding, I'm going to set this to the game path and the left stick. So now we have this set up. I'm going to create a new action. So I'm going to minimize this and then create a new actions. And this is for fire. And for the fire, I'm going to set this to the left control. And I'm going to add the new bindings for the gamepad and just pick the gamepad. And for the button, I'm going to pick the button ease for shooting. And now let's create a new actions for jumping. And for the first binding, let's just listen for spacebar. And we can add a new binding. And this is for the joystick or the gamepad. And let's just pick the button south option here. Okay, now we are done with our binding. You can add more binding, for example, like the right analog on the gamepad, just create a new actions and set the value to pass through vector 2. But for this example, this is enough. And the other thing that we want to do, I'm going to copy the basic UI maps here. So here, if we go to the package, 
and then under the input system under the input system here expand the plugins folder under the player input we have the default input action so i'm going to double click this and it will open a window and this is the mapping for this assets here and i'm going to copy this ui press copy here and then go to the base control and then right click and then paste it here so it will create new action maps called ui with the same settings as this one here and we need to do this in order to make the touch control later to work otherwise it won't work so let's just close this window here and i'm going to press the save asset button it will save the base controls asset and if we go to the new input folder we can just close this and now let's select the base control and we want to generate c sharp class so press apply so now we've set up our control here let's modify the fsm to drive the player movement but before we can modify the player fsm we need to import this new input system actions created by digitom from the playmaker forum website so i'm going to put this link on the description and just download this but i've already downloaded so i'm going to import this into our project now here under the asset i'm going to choose import package custom package and i'm going to import the input system actions and press import Okay, now let's go to the Playmaker window and select player. For the movement, we need to deactivate the get axis first. And I'm going to add the new input action called input system read vector 2 value. And here we can pick the action reference. So if we press this circle button, you see that we have a path to the analog action that we've created under the basic action maps. So let's just pick this. But we need to store this to a vector value. So I'm going to store this to a vector variable. You can create a new one if you don't have it. So I'm going just to pick this input vector here. And now we need to split this value into a float. So let's just use the get vector to xy. And I'm going to put this on top here. And let's pick the input vector variable. And let's grab the x value i'm going to grab the x value to the underscore speed here and enable the every frame option okay so now we have grabbed the input vector value this will produce number from negative one to one into this speed value here so we need to multiply the speed value with the run speed variable let's just search for the float multiply and put it below the get vector to xy and i'm going to pick the speed value and I'm going to multiply this with the run speed variable. And I'm going to check every frame also. Now we have set this up. We can just disable the get axis action here. For flipping the direction, as you can see here under the direction FSM, we are relying on the get axis action. So let's just disable this and also disable the float to integer because we don't need this anymore. And for the face left, I'm going to disable the same action. And basically, we need just to pass our speed value from the movement into the speed integer here. So let's go back to the movement FSM. And let's just use the set FSM integer. And let's put this below the float multiply. And we don't need to change the game object, but we need to pick the FSM name. And this should be the direction. And for the variable name, let's just pick the speed integer. And for the value, we want to pass the speed underscore. So we need to convert this to an integer because underscore speed is a float. So just pick this and enable every frame. Okay, let's save our scene and now let's give it a try. You see that I can move using left and right keyboard. And the flipping works perfectly. And I can also use the A and D keyboard. Okay, there you go. But the jumping and the fire is not working right now. So we need to fix that. Let's go to the jump FSM here. And let's just disable the get button down first. And now we need to use the input perform event. So let's just pick this. And let's just pick the basic jump button. And let's just send to the do jump event here. Now we can safely delete the get button down. And for the fire or the shooting FSM, let's just go to the shooting FSM. And let's just use the same action, which is the input system perform event. 
And for the action reference, let's just pick the basic fire path action here. And send event, let's send this to fire. Now we can safely delete the get button down. Save our scene and let's test this again. Now we can jump as you can see and we can also fire. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we need to integrate the touch control so we can control this game on mobile platform. So go to the project folder and we have the samples and we will have this folder if we import the on-screen control from this input system library here. So if you haven't done that, just press the import into project button here. Okay, and now under the samples folder, we have this input system and we have the on-screen controls. Now we have this prefabs for the button and the stick. So let's just expand our canvas and then drag the stick first. And I'm going to reposition the stick and probably put it around here. I'm going to change the anchor to the bottom left. And now we need to map the control path to the left stick gamepad. And it's already set correctly. And this needs to be mapped to the base control action, the analog one. So that's why I have put the gamepad left stick binding here. So this control path here will trigger this analog value. And for the jump button and the fire button, we need to drag the button prefabs to the canvas. And let's just put this here. I'm going to also change the transform anchor to the bottom right. And now let's expand the button. I'm going to change the text. This one to be fire. And I'm going to duplicate this button and put this side by side here and rename the text to jump. And now we need to set the correct control path. So I'm going to pick for the game path and for firing, we are using the button East. You can pick the keyboard control based on the base actions mapping, but I'm going to use the gamepad. And here I'm going to also pick the gamepad and we are going to pick the button South. Save this. I'm going to make sure that I've mapped this to the correct path. So let's just go to the new input folder again and open this. And for the fire, it sets to the East gamepad button. And for the jam, it sets to the South button of the gamepad here. So this should work and let's save our scene. And now let's give it a try. So now if we try to control the player, we can use the keyboard and we can use also for jumping and firing. But we can also use the mobile control here. Oh, sorry, there is one thing that I forgot here. So under the event system, we need to replace the standalone input module with the input system UI input model here, the new one. So let's just click this button here. It will replace this. And now we need to drag our base control to this action asset. And this is why I copy the UI mapping because this module here relies on the UI mapping as you can see here. So if I drag the base control, it will automatically read our UI mapping here. And let's save this. And now let's try this again. Okay, now if we drag the left stick, as you can see, our character move. And if I press fire, the player fire. And if I press jump, the player jump. So, so yeah, that is how we create touch control for Playmaker using the new input system. And special thanks to Digitom for creating these actions. I've put the link to the forum post in the description. And if you like this video, hit that like button and please do subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.